Hello educators, this is your instructional designer Troy and in this video we're going to be taking a look at importing and exporting course packages in Blackboard Ultra coming up. Now before we begin, I wanted to tell you about the other videos that I have on my channel. A lot of the videos are built around Blackboard Ultra, specifically telling you about the features and the settings within Blackboard Ultra. So definitely check those out and subscribe if you like the information. Now, in this section, we're wanting to take a look at the importing and exporting of a course package. Most of you guys may know this about a common cartridge or some kind of file that you're getting from an LMS and moving it to another LMS or moving content within a particular LMS for this in instance, we have Blackboard Ultra. There are ways to move content or copy content from one course to another, but I'm specifically going to show you the difference between importing and exporting the entire course, including or excluding the student information. We want to do this when we're looking at our master shells. We have maybe a master course that all of our other courses in our particular sections are copied from. We're wanting to move that into our, uh, our live sessions. And we also want to back up our master course to make sure that we have the most up-to-date copy when those terms are being uh, you know, duplicated. So let's take a look at this process, and I hope this helped you out. So let's begin by taking a look at the course shell that I'm wanting to move the content into or import the course package into. You can see that this is a sandbox shell that I have here and I have modules, I have some items in this course. Uh, and so if I simply go and import a common cartridge or the file into this course, it actually is going to put all of the content at the bottom of the page here. So I will still have all this content and the gradebook will be set up according to the way that this course is. So if you're wanting to uh, say back up uh, maybe a live class that you've been teaching into your master, I know that throughout the semester we might be uh, adding and editing as we go and that's completely fine, but we want to be able to back all of that stuff up to our master so the next time we teach it, it comes from that master course and that master course is up to date. So the first thing that we want to do in the course that we are moving the content to is actually erase or delete all of the content in this course. We wanna start this out with a brand new course. We want nothing in the grade book. We want nothing in the course content. And we can go through and simply do this by finding an ellipsis and deleting and deleting one thing at a time. Or we can go to the batch edit setting. So at the very top of our course, we can find this ellipsis here. And this allows us to manage the items within our course content in this page. You can see we have batch edit import content, which we're going to be using later, and export content, as well as copy content. So for this example, I'm actually going to use the batch edit. I can come in here and select all of the content. I can come down to the bottom right-hand corner and delete items and hit delete. Now this is going to delete all of the items on the course content page. There are a few other places that content might live whether it's the discussion tab, and I can see that I have two discussions here. So I wanna make sure that I delete those as well. I'm gonna refresh my screen to make sure that those were uh, not being deleted during that process. I can go and hit delete and remove these discussions. The other thing I wanna look at is my grade book. I have several items here that I still want to be able to delete from this course. I can go and find these ellipsis and hit delete. So once we've deleted all of the content in the gradebook, we should have a picture that looks like this. We, we don't have anything in there. In our course content, we have a get started page. So this ensures here that we have nothing in our actual course itself. Now, I'm an administrator on our site. You can get the administrator to completely reset your course on the back end. But again, this is a way for you to be able to do it yourself. Uh, and make sure that the content is moving in and out of the courses that you want to be uh, moving in and out of those courses. So now that we have our course cleaned up, let's go to the course that we want to export the packet. 
from. I'm going to find another sandbox shell that I have here. I have a master course template that we've developed for our school that has learning modules that had to start here. So this is going to simulate all of the content that you have in your course. Uh, once you're on the course that you're exporting, you can go and find the same ellipsis and find the export course package. Now, right here, the export course package, it looks like there's nothing to click on or nothing to view. This icon is actually a button. It's a square with an arrow. We're going to click this, and it is now going to ask us, do we want to export the student activity data in this export? This is where we would want to decide, do we want all of the information from the students, whether it's completed assignments, whether it's a roster, enrollment, discussion posts, any of this do we want it to actually come with the content itself? This is a good idea if we have maybe an incomplete in the course. We've just finished up the semester, but we still have that student out there wanting to complete uh, you know, assignments. Maybe we're going to move this information into its own shell, knowing that it's an incomplete the student has maybe this summer to uh, you know, finish that information. Regardless of what the point is, we're going to say yes or no depending on if we want the student activity there. For this instance, I'm going to say no. In most instances, you're going to want to have just the content and not the student data. So it will take some time to process. If I wanna speed up this process a little bit, I can hit F5 on my keyboard. All that does is refresh my browser page and we can see that it has finished. Uh, I will also get an email telling me that my package is finished. And right here, it has a file that I can manage. Now, this is telling me that it will be deleted after 30 days, and that's completely fine. We can always make another file of this kind uh, in this exact manner. But we want to be able to download this into a hard drive. Once we click this link, we can then see that it's downloading to our computer, and we can wait for that download to happen. So as this downloads, at this point, we can now manage our archive of files. Any course that we are teaching, we have this export course package. We can export a package to our hard drive or to our cloud storage, and we can manage our own archive files. This is a way that we can make sure that we have the most up-to-date file in our particular shells. And as the terms move, we can actually import these files into those particular shells for those particular terms. Now for this example, I'm gonna walk you through the process of importing this packet to Blackboard Ultra, but just know that you can actually import this packet to say Moodle or Canvas or Desire to Learn. You can move this packet into any LMS that accepts common cartridges. That way you can have the content and move them between platforms. I know that I've taught at other universities that I wanted to move content from say Moodle into Canvas or Canvas into Blackboard. And you're able to do that just by this simple process. Now that our file is downloaded to our computer, we're wanting to go out to the course that we're going to upload this to. And at the very top of the course, we're gonna find that same ellipsis and we're gonna find import content. Now it gives us an option that we can move something from cloud storage, we can move something from content market or content collection, but I'm gonna select this import course content. It says course content package. It's gonna open up a file window. You can go to your downloads folder where this uh, downloaded to. I'm gonna hit export file. You can see that it has the title of the course, a zip folder. I'm gonna click on this and hit open. Now it'll take some time because it is moving the content, all of the content, whether it's assignments, gradable items, uh, PowerPoints, you know, this was kind of a relatively empty course. So if you have a lot of content, this might take a minute here, but we're gonna let it do its thing. And we're going to see that all the content will populate in the course content area. Now, after it hits 100%, we can see that it put us back to our homepage of our course. It says importing course content, and we're just gonna let it do its thing. It will take a while, depending on how much content you actually have in the course that you're moving, whether that's large videos, PowerPoints, or files. So we're gonna let it do its thing and we'll check back here in a little while. Now you can see it's been successful. It has our modules here on our course content area. We also see that it says that your content imported successfully, it has this gray bar at the bottom, we can hit okay. And now we can go through and make sure all of the content is there. 
I know that uh, once this is completed, that all the content should be there. We can go through the content and make sure that everything is there. I know that during that import process, some things might be rearranged. Uh, I've seen that or experienced that for myself. I know that sometimes discussions, maybe things that were visible or not visible uh, come through. But you know, just know that all of your content is here and you will be able to rearrange things, whether it's your grade book, due dates, that sort of thing. So just go through the course itself, make sure that all the content is there. You can rearrange it how you would like. And now that you've successfully imported a course cartridge. I hope this video was helpful. If you need any additional help with your Blackboard course, feel free to reach out or comment with your questions below. For the best tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out my other YouTube videos. The best help that I can give to you is go to help.blackboard.com and check out all of their walkthroughs and specific settings for your course, either in Blackboard Ultra or Blackboard Original. Thanks for watching.